There you go. So for our next dish, we have our garden salad. About 20 types of vegetables on this plate. Mm. Mm. Very salted. A mix of different textures. Some oil flavors. Beautiful flavor. Hey guys, that's the Godzilla head and we are at Kabukicho, the heart of Shinjuku. And I figured this is probably the best place to start this episode because we are having some kaiseki. No, 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 no. I know what you're thinking. Why is a traditional Japanese cuisine going to do with an ultra modern city like this? That is because we are not having traditional kaiseki. We are having something that is not bound by tradition, but rather uses it as a framework. It's called modern kaiseki. And the establishment that we are visiting is called that. For the uninitiated, Dan, helmed by chef Zayu Hasegawa, is a two Michelin star modern kaiseki restaurant. It was also bestowed the title of the best restaurant in Japan and Asia by the prestigious World 50 Best Restaurants in 2022. The only other Japanese restaurant that got this high on the list was Narisawa in 2013, another juggernaut in Japan's culinary scene which we might visit if we have the budget and if we can get a slot. Anyway, that is a quick intro. We gotta move now because it's getting close to dinner and then isn't located here. They are located in Shibuya. Here we are, finally seated at the legendary den. Now, this place is pretty interesting. It's located very discreetly on the ground floor of an office building. Even the main entrance, that sign, doesn't tell you you are entering den. However, there is a small little sign on the doorknob that tells you it's den there. So, really interesting. Now, the entire setting of den is pretty chill, I would say. There's a very good vibe. Uh, service has been really friendly so far and you can see there are all sorts of very interesting ornaments adorning this establishment. There are writings on the wall from different well-known chefs and also of course chefs I use 50 best trophies. <laughs> now we are about to start and I really hope I'm adequately equipped to illustrate the flavors that we are about to receive. I will do my best. Alright, first course, this is a wagashi, it's called the monaka, which is a traditional Japanese snack and I'm going to open it up really quickly. And it's basically some wafer, generally traditionally it has anko within, but this obviously is then, it's not going to be anko. It smells really good, let's try this out. Mm. I'm guessing it's every time, I'm not too sure yet. With Fogwa, very fruity. The fogwa plays actually on the back end. You definitely taste fogwa, but it's not very pronounced, it's not very strong. The main flavor is the fruit actually. Mm. And the surface is really crispy, it's really wafer like. It just crumbles some fresh air. Mm. Mm. Oh, the this, this spread is so like unevenly. So, this but you get a lot of fogwa, it's very umami. I'm guessing it could be a mixture of different citruses. There's probably yuzu as well. There's some bitterness. Mm, this is good. There's some acidity as well. <laughs> Alright guys, I have just been schooled by Noriko-san. Apparently, it's like it's not citrus, it's kumquat, which tastes very much like citrus. And they've got fermented quite so as well as some pickled cucumber for that nice refreshing crunchiness. Mm, the combination of flavors is very playful. And immediately you can tell it's not bound by tradition. Great start. 
Alright guys, this is the second dish. It is basically a fish cake, but it's not a fish cake, it's slightly fried on the outside. And inside it's made with oysters and then they serve it with some sweet spinach. You're supposed to eat it together. I need mean, some broth, so let's go. Savory. You can definitely taste the undertone of oysters. It's rather umami. The spinach gives it some crunch and there's some form of a mm. Mm, the oyster flavor is starting to pull through now. Oh, this is very good. This is very good. Mm. Mm. Mm, the oyster, it kind of hits you like in waves. Mm. Okay guys, this is the exciting one. This is one of Dan's uh, classic dishes, the Dan Turkey Fried Chicken. You can see away Chef Hasegawa's face and he's got this very cute looking Pucci as well, his dog. He even recommends a lot of restaurants, like his favorite restaurants. Most of them I actually know. So anyway, we're gonna very quickly open up this box and... It smells really really good and look at that beautifully fried chicken wing lying right in there together with some leaves on top and some sort of like straws underneath. I'm gonna very quickly take it out now and put it onto the plate that has been made by Chef Zayu's friends. Look at this beautiful chicken wing, look at how crisp it looks and that plump bit here. This is basically a stuffing with it, I don't know what it is yet but oh it's piping hot and it smells absolutely heavenly. I love fried chicken, let's go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's tough with glutinous rice. You start with the savouriness and the oil fragrance of the fried chicken is crisp. It's exactly how a fried chicken will be. The juices kind of burst in your mouth, and you've got the tender meats, and then you get into this mushy, glutinous rice with a nice firm texture. There's some nuts within as well. Mm. The fragrance of the rice pairs ridiculously well with that chicken. Mm. This is done really, really well. I mean, it's basically a Chinese dish, right? We have it in Malaysia as well, but it's not done as well. This is really good. This is the fish course. Basically, it's mackerel lightly marinated in soy sauce, and they've got a wasabi on the side. And over here is a seaweed vinegar sauce. So, I'm gonna pick up this beautiful, tender looking mackerel. Gonna dip some of that thing on. Oh, I forgot the wasabi. Let me grab some of the wasabi, put it on. Let's go. Mm. Mm -hmm. Tender texture with a nice bite, a nice sort of like a snap at the end. The wasabi gives it some heat. It really tastes like you are having a very nice sashimi in a high-end sushi restaurant. You can still taste, in a way, the enhanced flavor of the mackerel because the main thing you show you, show you basically what it does is it brings out the main flavor of the mackerel. And look at this, it's so glistening. I love the color of this. I think it's maybe lightly aged since they marinated it. The seaweed vinegar though, I didn't taste as much. So this time I'm gonna take another piece and dip more of that. And let's give it another go. Now, I can taste the vinegar. Can't really tell the seaweed. It tastes sort of like a balsamic vinegar. Oh, this makes it very good. Just smear a generous amount of vinegar on it. This brings it to the next level. It's done really, really well. Very good. I love the color of this fish. It looks so beautiful. Mm. Oh, the seaweed flavor goes through now. Holy cow, this is really good. I'm just gonna be really generous with that, with that vinegar. Super fun. It's sort of like a... Like a crescendo, it's coming up with a crescendo. I'm super excited for the next course. Okay guys, next dish. A fish dish in a way with some assortment of vegetables we have got over here. Some Spanish mackerel, which also looks very nicely cooked. There's a little bit of rawness in the middle, which is done by design. There are some assortment of vegetables as well. Yellow turnips, there are 
Brussels sprouts and it smells really nice, that charred fragrance. And this is called Kinome, the baby leaves of Sancho pepper. And this is an Italian cabbage, I can't remember what it is. Anyway, let's cut in, we're supposed to eat it together with the vegetables. I'm gonna try and grab that macro. Oh, it's breaking apart nicely. Okay, some of that Brussels sprouts. Maybe a piece of hero turnip. Okay, this real is complex. I need time. The texture of the mackerel. It's got a nice oiliness to it, oil fragrance. Tender, tender, but still from fresh. Oh, the vegetables, the yellow tunip. Mmm, it's sweet. It's got a nice bite. And the Brussels sprouts, they are sort of like char grilled. There's this charred Maya reaction together with that crunchiness. This is good, this is very good. i to grab the other piece with some essential leaf together with that crispy, crispy looking Italian cabbage. Mm. It's not just the texture, guys, it's got its own flavor as well. It's sort of like, it's so crisp to the point I would say it's airy. I can't. Oh, oh, the Sancho fragrance is starting to pull through. Oh, it's really ramping it up real good, guys. This is it's so good. The combination of the aroma, the flavor, the oily fragrance, the textures. This is what you expect from a three Michelin restaurant, not a two Michelin restaurant. This dish. This is trim machine already for the pound. So for our next dish, we have our garden salad. About 20 types of vegetables on this plate. How many types? About, about 20. 20? Yeah, don't count them. I didn't count okay. them. <laughs> so, okay. Okay guys, the signature dish and then the garden salad or they like to call it dan salad. Basically there are around maybe 20 different types of vegetables cooked in various different ways. It looks absolutely beautiful and you can smell it. Uh, some of them are fried, some of them are made tempura style, some of them are just you know maybe fresh as they are and we're supposed to just eat it and try all the different flavors. Of course you've got a nice smiley face carrot guy smiling back at you. This is so playful and this is so fun. I'm ready to dig in. Slightly salted, a mix of different textures. What I have right there, some oil fragrance, beautiful flavor. I'm gonna try the crispy ones next. And there are these black dots here, I don't know what they are. Sort of resemble like, like tiny little ants. Okay, let's grab one of these. Mm. Grab this colorful looking one at the back. Grab the crispy thing. Mm. 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 Is that yam? Oh, it tastes like um, it's toasty, mm, crunchy. Goodness, the flavors, they are converging. Two mouths in, I've got, I don't know, how many flavors. Oh no, this crispiness. This is beyond my ability to illustrate how it tastes. Ooh, he even has this carrot that looks like it's just plucked from the soil. I'm guessing it's some sort of dressing, but it looks almost like it's plucked from the soil. It's like everything is just untouched. But you could still taste the natural flavor of the carrot pulling through after the pickle, the tang. Oh, oh, again, another tree side dish. <laughs> the potato inness of the potato. <laughs> Man, the mix of vegetables here. It makes it feel like a meaty dish. I don't think this can be done better. This is insane. Oh, look at that juicy tomato. I'm expecting it to be really good. <laughs> That's all I expose. Very juicy. It's not just the tomato. It's, again, it's so like pickles. It tastes a little like plum. It's, 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 it's a plum tomato. But the, the natural flavor of tomato still lingers. 
<laughs> I'm so sorry guys, I can't. I, I just can't describe this. I have no words. <laughs> I have no words. I surrender. Let me just finish this. After that delicious garden salad we have got here a soup is basically made out of turnip mainly we've got grated turnip and then a whole turnip in there and then we've got some fish as well yellowtail i'm guessing the broth is probably a mixture of fish broth with turnip and up top these greens are called seri which is japanese parsley and it smells really nice so i'm gonna first try a bit of the soup and i will try the ingredients mm, refreshing Works as a palate cleanser, definitely is a palate cleanser. That is such an explosive garden salad. Mm. The celery gives it a very herbaceous flavor. It's very Japanese, lightly savory, very delicate in flavor. And the grated turnip, I thought it gives it a little bit of greediness. It is an extremely heartwarming soup. It's sort of like when you're out working for the whole day and you're really tired and you come back to this soup. <laughs> That's what home cooking tastes like. Gonna cut a little bit into that. Oh, it's so soft. The turnip is really soft. <laughs> Burst of readiness in a great way. It's not like bitter or anything. Oh, this is again a very well done soup. Mm. What about that buri? Mm. Fun. Oh, the sweetness of the berry push through. Anyway, a little bit of sourness. It is cooked very well. This soup is very, very good. Goodness, the earthiness, the sourness from the berry. It sort of balances the earthiness, the sweetness of the soup. And the fragrance, the herbal fragrance from the savory. Heartwarming to my core. Mm. Alright guys, this is the main course, um, the final course before the dessert and we have got rice and it's cooked together with bamboo shoots and bonito broth and these greens are the sancho leaf greens and on the side I believe this is probably miso and some pickled vegetables so let's quickly take a bite This is such a magical flavor. The flavor is so light, it's very delicate, it's very fragrant. The texture is what gets you. The rice is bouncy, it's got a little bit of stickiness. There's this flavor that I'm going to attribute to the use of bonito broth. It's not very like bonito y, but there's this nice fragrance behind the rice. And the bamboo shoot is crunchy, it's slides really thin, it's got a nice crispness to it, as the texture. And the key player here is that sancho leaf, it's got a citrusy zing without the extreme spiciness or the numbness. Mm. The color of the soup. Mm. This is where the flavor is at. Oh, it's so robust. It's definitely miso, I can taste miso. But it's got something more to it. There are these crunchy bits of thought, I'm guessing it's onion. I don't know what is that base. This is based on top of the miso. And this is so umami. It changes a regular miso to something that is just it's just absolutely umami. This is the main flavor. The rice uses the flavors, but they are fantastic pairing. This is very good. Now I'm gonna try the pickle as well. <laughs> Superb. So juicy, so crunchy. Someone is very salted. Not the most punchy type, you know, but it works fantastically well with a very robust miso soup and a very fragrant rice. You don't want to overly pickle pickle, if I may. But this it's a beautiful iron to the main courses. I think we are ready for this. <laughs> Alright guys, the final item of today, a dessert. And I think it's very common to see in Kaiseki restaurants, they always end with a relatively simple dessert. And this is Huguenets up top. These are the uh, original Japanese citrus. And underneath is some pudding. And up top we've got a syrup mix from Huguenets as well. It's basically a yellow citrusy fruit. And we have got also some hojicha to go with this dessert. I'm gonna dig right in, grab a slice of that citrus together with pudding and the syrup. 
Super soft, gooey pudding. And the citrus, there's this heat of acidity. And I think a little bit of bitterness as well. And the syrup that's made from this citrus is sweet. It's got a really amazing combination because you start with a very mellow flavor of the pudding in this case. And you get a sudden heat of acidity with the bitterness from the citrus and then the sweetness. It's such a simple looking dessert. But I would say it's executed perfectly. It's really good. Goodness. It's like grapefruit, the acidity of a grapefruit with some bitterness and the pudding with the sweetness. <sighs> Guys, I think we just might have the first place that we're gonna give a score we have never given before. I'm gonna finish this amazing dessert. I'll see you for plate nine. This is the honey toast with anko paste and butter from Boulangerie Sudo. For those of you who have seen episode M4, you would have known we have had the honey toast before without this. We finally managed to get this. This is our second visit and it's recommended obviously by Chef Zayu of Dan. <laughs> Look at the amount of anko right in the middle and the thick butter. The honey toast is obviously, as usual, it's going to be quite crispy. This is going to be such a mess to eat but I'm going to do my best. It's so decadent. It's actually better than just having a honey toast. The flavor of Anko, nice sweetness. The flavor is red. Mm. And the butter is just there to sort of give you a nice silky smoothness. Guys, you really gotta visit Boulangerie Sudo. It's located quite a ways from city center. But visit, you gotta go really early. They open at 10, but at 9 45, you've got a long line. So yeah, I think now we can finally talk about then splitting time. So then, Wow! <laughs> One word. Wow! I guess we're done here. Bye. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. On a serious note, definitely the best meal that we've had this trip by a huge margin. And I think this might be the place that could score a full 3 plates on the gourmet plate. And if they do, they are the first 3 plates score on our channel. But before we get to that, let us break it down. The meal is definitely rooted in the tradition of kaiseki. However, from the get-go, Chef Zayu sets a playful tone with a supposed dessert wagashi as a starter, not to mention the monaka is savoury instead of sweet. Flavours are executed on a very high technical level and it shows. The dishes that follow were also very very well executed, rather befitting of a true Michelin establishment. Dan Ducky Fried Chicken is easily the best stuffed chicken wing we've had, such simple direct flavours that taste like transcendent home cooking. The pivotal dish was what came after, the macro sashimi. Perfectly textured and flavoured with multiple layers of bristling umami thanks to the lightly marinated macro, seaweed vinegar and uplifting wasabi. This felt like a dish from a 3 Michelin star restaurant. A really really strong dish. Mm. Mm. From here on is a steep climb, a roaring crescendo of multiple 3 star level dishes. Of course, with the climax being Dan's signature, the garden salad which not only looks fun and as though they have just picked it out of their backyard, but tastes almost mind-bending. Absolute beast of a dish. They didn't drop their ball on dessert too. Despite how simple it looks, it hit really hard. Utilizing the intense tartness from the Hyuganatsu, tamed by the creamy pudding with sweet Hyuganatsu syrup, every bite was lip puckering yet so intoxicating. It feels like you're enjoying something forbidden, the forbidden fruit. Obviously, you can already tell the flow of the course is impeccable. It starts great, giving you a clear idea of what Chef Zayu's food is about. And before you know it, we have ventured into transcendent dish territory. A rush of world-class dishes that ends beautifully on a world-class dessert. And with that, we feel Dan has ventured into three plate category. The highest score we are able to give on the gourmet plate. Which means that's some absolutely mind-blowing culinary and then it's that spot in Tokyo worth at least a trip in your lifetime. 
their position as the best restaurant in Japan as well as Asia is much more than justified. And on this trajectory, it seems getting bestowed their third Michelin star will only be a matter of time. We also want to make a point on cohesion. From the playfulness reflected in the food, to the casual, lively vibe of the restaurant, to the impeccable service that's not only professional but also friendly and very well covered. <laughs> a huge thanks to Noriko-san for receiving us, Koji-san for tending to us that night, putting up with our barrage of questions on the dishes, and Emi-san as well as Zayu-san for popping by to check on us during the meal. It was warm and felt like we have stepped into a friend's home and had an awesome dinner. Of course, also a huge thanks to the remaining team at them for such a wonderful night. This will absolutely go down as one of the most memorable magical dining experiences that we have had to date and I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as we did. If you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you yet to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell button. Till we see again next week, we will still be in Tokyo food hunting, probably trying something that is less budget heavy since we have had two rather wallet slimming meals already. So stay tuned and I'll see you next week. Bye! Bye.